Footland, we've got a great show for you today. We're talking about all the tight ends, the great ones and the barfy ones. We're talking strategy of tight end. What are you supposed to do in a draft with this kind of a landscape? Should you stream? Should you go after one of those middle round values? One of the early guys is really good episode. And most importantly, huge announcement about, about, about the mega bowl. It's here, baby. You got to check it out right now. Hey, Foot Clan, you're getting ready for your drafts, and you've heard us talk about the ultimate draft kit. Here's what's important. You choose a site with a proven track record of winning. We are the only site with multiple experts in the top 10 for in-season and top 10 for draft rankings, including a number three overall draft, a number five overall in-season finish in 2017 and 2018. Check out the ultimate draft kit. You're going to get the best information to get you ready for your draft, always updated, Ready to go at ultimatedraftkit.com. And you can also, you know, do a little bit more than just upgrade your fantasy team. We're proud to partner with St. Jude this year. A dollar of every Ultimate Draft Kit sold will go to St. Jude Children's Research Hospital to support its mission of finding cures and saving children. Learn more at ultimatedraftkit.com. And we have a message from NHTSA, everybody. If you think drunk driving is no big deal, you couldn't be more wrong. You could get in a crash. People could get hurt or killed. You could get arrested, incur huge legal expenses, or even lose your job. So next time you plan on drinking, make sure you plan ahead. Designate a sober driver or use a ride service to get home safely. Drive sober or get pulled over. Welcome. To the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, coming to you from pristineauction.com studios with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Uh, welcome in. Another day in the neighborhood. <laughs> Mike's hair looking good today. Oh, <laughs> what? Today? Every just, day, just the bro. day, Mike. Uh, now, how can you tell who he is? Is well, it look, because he's holding up a sign that I says know. Mike? Every day, Brooks reminds us. You know, give it. Uh, we got new people coming in. It's that time of the season. It's fantasy football. Not everybody is <laughs> as insane as we are. You've got your name tag on, but I want people to know that Mike is over here. Oh, Jason, oh, here I am. In. Look now, who's stupid? Andy. That's who. <laughs> um, what a dumb name. Number one. Andy, Mike, and Jason, the fantasy footballers, welcoming you in to another episode. It's Wednesday, August 14th. We got the top 10 quarterbacks on the show today, some huge announcements. We have buy or sell. We even are going to talk tight ends as well what did as I say? quarterbacks, which we did Dang do it. the last two episodes. So if you want quarterbacks, good news, already did it. This is where I check the news and notes. I see Andrew Luck's name in there, and I see Case Keenum's name. We're talking quarterbacks, Jason. Mm, I apologize. <laughs> oh, man. Can't, can't wait to talk Case Keenum and Daniel Jones. Everybody just turned off their podcast. <laughs> Click. Um, no, it's a jam-packed show. We're excited to have you in with us. If you're brand new to the Fantasy Footballers, we're a five-day-a-week oh, podcast. And uh, we're happy to have you with us. We're going to help you win your league. Going to help you approach things the right way in your draft. Going to have fun doing it. No doubt about it. I think we need to hit a couple of things before we hit buy and sell. Is that okay well, with you guys? Yeah, they're pretty big, oh, big, pretty, uh, pretty actually, big things. There's here. a really, really big one. First, I'll preface it. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Also, we hate you. Oh, man. Yes. Okay? Foot Clan Both out of there those. breaking our hearts. Because thank you. I said it like 10 times because that's the real sentiment. All the Listener League entries, videos, stories, poems, pictures, um, diatribes, whatever Musics, you want to call it. events. Um, unbelievable. So that's all the thank yous. Sandwiches. The I hate you is that we do have a finite amount of Listener League spots to bestow upon people. It is an arduous process. I should have said thank you for food. There was food that showed up at the studio. We obviously had it tested by Brooks first to make sure it was oh, safe to eat. Of course. He is no longer with us. <laughs> um, so really not a thank you to that guy. <laughs> right. But, well, thank you to Brooks in that case. But, <laughs> yes. We'll never forget you, Brooks. <laughs> but, Your uh, memory will live on. <laughs> but we hate you at the same time because they're too good. And we had to look. And we had to choose. Only a few people uh, had the option to make the cut, and there are so many 
absolutely worthy Listener League submissions that unfortunately did not get in, that it breaks our heart. You guys put in so much work, energy, effort. You you guys and gals are amazing out there. Your personalities, your uh, your passion. It's just it's just awesome. So genuine thank you from the bottom of our heart. But and we email and we emailed. We did. We we emailed the winner. There. So check your email. Check your spam if if you haven't seen it. Um, however, you can if you're like I don't have man. I did all that work. I didn't get in, or I didn't even do work because I don't have that 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 passion that that. You know, I, I didn't. I maybe I didn't want to do work. Maybe I don't know how maybe to. Maybe I'm busy. Make a music video. You can get in next year's listener league just by playing fantasy football. The Megala Bowl <laughs> is here again. The 2019 Megala Bowl. Oh, you you chickened out on your modulation, bro. You had some room to go up. <laughs> You were leaning back. I thought I was hurting your ears. <laughs> if you missed out on getting into the Listener League, if you like fantasy football, if you want to play in a tournament against other Foot Clan members, this year's winner of the Megalobowl, which is now open, this year's winner not only gets the honor of being the Megalobowl champion, but you also win a coveted 2020 Listener League spot, plus a personal invite from the three of us to join us for Wild Card Saturday. So if you win the league, you've got the personal invite. Come tour the studio, sit in on a show, um, watch the games with us, and you win a listener league spot. Now, the Megala Bowl was huge last year, Jay. It was awesome and huge. but <laughs> <laughs> Awesome and huge. But <laughs> it was limited last year because we simply couldn't manage the amount of people that wanted to be in it. But that has been remedied. Thank you, Sleeper. So everybody – that is a supporter of this show at jointhefoot.com. You can go right now, jointhefoot.com. When you're, when you're a patron, you can click the link, enter the tournament. There are almost 600. We just posted this link. There's already almost 600 people in there. It is a an enormous tournament, maybe the biggest. Uh, what did you say? Awesome and hugest that's of all right. time? That's right. And, and uh, it's you the know, megalist, that's not, for sure. Not to mention, like, okay, there's going to be one winner, but... A lot of people have created great relationships from joining these leagues of fellow Foot Clan members. So it's just a great time playing fantasy. You want another league, the Megala Bowl at jointhefoot.com is where you want to go. The Megala Bowl will be open to join until 8 p.m. on Wednesday, September 4th. Again, go to jointhefoot.com, um, become a supporter of the show, enter the league. Bing, bang, boom. You get a lot You're of in other the tournament. cool stuff, too. Like yeah, an extra show every single week. Uh, updates on Sunday. I mean, there's there's tons of stuff happening over there. Jointhefoot.com. All right. Um, without further ado, let's get into our uh, quick question of this Wednesday. Buy or sell, presented by Pristine Auction. All right. Buy or sell time, guys. We're doing it again because it's Wednesday. Titans wide receiver Corey Davis will outperform his current average draft position of 906. Sell. <laughs> this oh, is sorry. It's not a race. I, thought, I felt like I was on a game show. But sometimes with Corey Davis, it may feel like a race to sell. That is the wide receiver 42. That is that is a long way down the list, yeah. Mike. Um, but will will he outperform wide receiver 42? Sell. Okay, he's still <laughs> oh, selling. Sorry. Last year, 65 receptions, 891 yards, four touchdowns. Every time that Mike uh, says sell, I get worried that I am not going to be allowed to then also select <laughs> sell, which would be my choice. I realize wide receiver 42 is very low, should be easy to beat, but Corey Davis had all the opportunity in the world last year. Let me let me illustrate that with, Please with a do. point. Who had a higher target share, Jar uh, Jarvis Landry or Corey Davis? Corey Davis. Jarvis Landry, I got you. I had to oh. say you with a trick question. To, em to emphasize this, Adam Thielen or Corey Davis? Remember how many targets Adam Thielen was getting? Yeah. Yeah, it's Corey Davis. <laughs> who, had, who had higher targets here? Corey Davis or Antonio Brown? No. I, I don't know if he's trying to trick us again. No, Corey it's Davis? Corey Davis. That's, that's the problem with Corey Davis. It's not more targets. We're just talking market share. but Percentage of team targets. Yes. It, <laughs> I'm selling. He, I'm selling. I don't think he outperforms it. Adam Humphreys is a target hound. They want to run the football with Derrick Henry. Delaney they Walker added, was not there. They A.J. added A.J. Brown. Brown. 
And they're a team that wants to run the ball. Yeah. So, yeah, Corey Davis, <clears throat> uh, I I am no longer – I don't think I ever was a huge believer, but I, – I was, and uh, I'm really disappointed. Yeah. All right. Uh, he, I think he's a good player. I just think he's in a bad situation. You put him on a different team, higher pass volume, I think he does work. Uh, it's it's hard to get higher. It's only his third season he's coming into as well. Yeah, I saw Brooks put entering year three, the year three narrative. Brooks has him in dynasty. <laughs> I don't. No. Uh, <laughs> I don't. No, I just think we're getting used to we're, our expectations for well, wideouts. The the problem is the the performance he had last year with the market share that he had. What was his fantasy finish? I can. I have that in twenty eighteen. He was the wide receiver twenty eight. Yeah, I mean he could definitely finish inside forty two. I'm still selling it. Humphreys You're is going to soak up targets. Walker Brown. The market share goes down. The team wants to run the football. I'm selling. Yeah, I mean, if he finishes as the wide receiver 36, he outperformed it. But I, I'm still selling because th there are other guys at where he's going that I think have a higher chance to finish better than Corey Davis. Seahawks running back Chris Carson will have at least 30 receptions this season. There's been a lot of Ooh. hype about uh, Chris Carson having the best hands on the team. And he, they want his targets to be at least in the 50 range. <laughs> okay, so what is happening last year over there? he had 20 receptions for 163 yards on 25 targets in 14 games. I'm buying. I'm buying. No more Doug Baldwin. A lot of uh, talk about involving Carson and Rashad Penny. And let's not forget Mike Davis. Quite a few vacated targets yes. with Mike Davis leaving. I'm buying Chris Carson more than 30 receptions. I definitely think he's more than 30 receptions. I mean, he was on pace last year for 23 receptions once he once he got the start in week three you know if you remember those first two weeks he he wasn't that involved um so yeah a slight tick up Mike Davis being gone I'm 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 rising a lot on Chris Carson I'm buying that the line was set too low because I think 30 is like 30 is not a ton 40 if is, you would if you would put the line at 40 it would be much ooh, harder and here's and, what here, watch this the line is now 40 I would sell. I think he's going to be in the 30s. I would also sell. And and I will say this to your point, Mike. 40 is the number at which, I mean, arbitrarily set, but that's the number where I view a running back as being heavily involved in the passing game. All right. Um, you got. right. Let's do one more. Let me see. Let me see. <sighs> Eagles wide receiver Alshon Jeffrey will top 900 yards receiving for the first time bye. since 2014. Bye. Yes, bye. Sell. Well, let, you're look, gonna you're going to sell. It's 2019, Mike. 2014 was a while ago. Okay, but it has been a, a number of years since he's done it, so I think it's a fair. Alshon Jeffrey played in 13 games last year. How many yards did Alshon Jeffrey have? 843. Yeah. Just a guess. Uh, that's very, very close to 900 with missing three games. That is uh, that is very fair. But I think that the additions uh, on this team of Miles Sanders catching the ball out of the backfield, Deshaun. J.J. Arcega-Whiteside, Deshaun Jackson. Uh, I Dallas mean, Goddard, year Dal two. Yeah, I mean, it's it's one of those things where that's not, that's not an outlandish line. I'm going to sell it. I don't think he gets 900. I think he may score a bunch, but I don't think he gets 900 yards receiving. If if he doesn't get 900 yards receiving, your prediction of Carson Wentz leading the league in passing yards is not happening. I don't agree with that. I I uh, do. I, I think if he doesn't get 900 yards receiving, he will have done what he's done the last five years, which is not get to that point. And Carson Wentz was just fine uh, with Alshon Jeffrey not getting to that point in uh, two seasons ago. So... I don't think he needs the yardage. He may be 12 touchdowns. You're saying Alshon's for fantasy value. Yeah, well, sure, for fantasy value or for Carson's fantasy value. Carson, in my opinion, doesn't need Alshon to go for 1,100 yards. Oh, I'm He's not got saying so many other guys. I'm talking 900 yards. E, that's an easy buy for me. Okay, so Jason, you are a seller? I am a sell. All right, that's buy or sell from Pristine Auction. Check them out at pristineauction.com. Let's get into the news. News and notes from around the league. Presented by Sleeper. Everybody wants to talk about Andrew Luck. Also, nobody wants to talk about Andrew Luck. Yeah, I'm, I'm tired of it. Colts general manager Chris Ballard came out, said the ankle needs to be addressed. Yesterday, it was a small little bone being reported by a man who doesn't know medicine, Jim Ursay. Um, 
the latest report, tested the ankle yesterday, saw a specialist, high ankle-ish, up by the calf, Ballard <laughs> ankle-ish. This is what, if you make fun of this show for below the shin comments, how dare you? Mm-hmm. For the last two days, small little bone, high ankle-ish. Dude. Jason, you are a medical genius. I got my doctorate at Harvard. How, how are you feeling today? I don't know, a little ankle-ish. Here's the thing. Fowler didn't guarantee he'd be ready for week one. Uh, we spoke to Dr. David Chow briefly at Pro Football Doc. If Great. you don't follow him, you should follow him. Um, he's one of the most trustworthy injury experts in the game. Here's what he said to us. There's very little chance that Andrew Luck will be 100% week one of the regular season. He's not suggesting that he won't play, but the report right now is that Look, there's not a clear diagnosis. They've said no surgery. It's going to be rehab. So the good news, according to David Chow, it's his lead leg. It's not the push-off leg. He can still play quarterback. But how mobile will Andrew Luck be, which is a part of his game? And if he plays at 85 or 90%, what does that mean? So medically, we do know that he won't be 100%. That's what David Chow said. And if he's not mobile... I mean, what are now? What's the increased odds of him getting beat up more, and cre- and making the injury worse? I don't know. Yeah. Well, their offensive line has improved. That's sure, helpful. but you still have to be able to move around and protect yourself. If you if you have to be a statue in the pocket, then you either need to make sure that ball gets out right away. If you or listen, you're gonna get hit. if you listen to Frank Reich talk about this issue. He makes the point of saying, look, Andrew Luck is a freak intellectually and physically. If he can get out on the field, he doesn't need much time, and he will progress much faster than you expect. We saw that last year. People freaking out about not throwing a Hail Mary in week one. They didn't freak out the rest of the season when he was the number whatever quarterback, uh, top five fantasy quarterback. So where's your confidence level? Will you? I know we don't draft the Andrew Lucks of the world very often. Maybe now you can now, now I, I mean, I, I am exactly what I said yesterday. If Andrew Luck drops into that ninth or tenth round, I might take him, pair him with a Josh Allen late so that I've got protection for the beginning of the season. I'm fine with that. Other than, other than getting him near the double-digit rounds, like he's off my board at current ADP. He, no chance would I take away a wide receiver or running back that I could get you know, in the sixth or seventh round to draft a guy that might not be there. He is dropping. He On, on Fantasy Football Calculator on, on August 5th, he was going at the back of the fourth, and now he's going at the back of the fifth. Is that yeah, a, Would you call that a small little drop? <laughs> it's that a, is way too high still. Yeah. Way too high. It's a big, small, ankle-ish drop. Yeah, I mean, you, you started to get into the top of the seventh round with the news we have today. I would be taking my shots on Andrew Luck, knowing that if he plays, you got a top five guy. But, yeah, it freaks me out, man. I, it I, should. I sent – T.Y. Hilton Dynasty trades out yesterday. Oh, Dyn- what? Dynasty? Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I I'm planning to win this year, and if I can swap T.Y. Hilton for another guy I believe in right. that doesn't have the variable, that's how I approach it. But he's still on my team. So um, Redskins coach Jay Gruden said Darius Guy still hasn't been fully cleared to play. It's not happening for Darius Geist this year. <clears throat> This is why we not the way you want it. We've said early in the off season, in the middle of the off season, and now he's not the back that you want to trust. There's just been uh, th- this timeline for his recovery. If he's just not going to magically overnight be at a hundred percent. So Adrian Peterson right now, I think, is a value. Darius Geis is still up in the air with all the injury issues. Even if he was a hundred percent. There's no guarantee of the workload he gets with Peterson and Thompson, and the offense is not one that I'm a fan of. If Darius Geis was in this boat on the existing Kansas City Chiefs roster, I'd be looking a little bit differently at the possibilities. But it's not a lot of upside. Case Keenum looks like the front runner to start. <laughs> uh, point in case. <laughs> oh. So there you go. Redskins quarterback Case Keenum. Cool. Uh, I think this is, you know, a little bit of an indictment on where Dwayne Haskins is at right now. I know Andy and I weren't giant fans of his potential coming out of college, but, you know, I've been wrong before. A lot to be determined. Antonio Brown arrived at training camp with his Ex- agent. <laughs> I like that he came with his agent, but this this is great news 
for, for like Brown's back. He's going to play. And if you bought the dip, that's uh, well, congratulations. Golden Tate lost his appeal. Jason. For the four-game suspension. We go to you for a live reaction. I know how Jason was. He hadn't said a word (laughs) for a while, and he was just hoping, hoping, hoping he could come on here and gloat. Oh, I would have gloated. Uh, But, of course, this was obvious, and everyone could see uh, from the beginning (laughs) that Golden Tate's suspension would be upheld. I don't think it should have been. You just wanted to believe. You just wanted to believe that one of these guys was going to – I wanted Tell to Tell the truth. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Shame on me. Oh, Kenyon Drake was spotted in a walking boot. Uh-oh. Left practice early yesterday. Walking boot to start practice today. Um, 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 um this has been part of the problem for Kenyon Drake getting a little banged up. Not going to help him establish himself as a one. No, it gives uh, an opportunity for the Bellagio. Yes, uh, Mr. K- Kalen Bellage. Right now, Kalen Bellage seems to be the better value out of these two guys in fantasy drafts as Kenyon Drake still is going way ahead of him. Um, you know, I'm I'm not extremely concerned about this until we find out specifics on what it is. That's yeah, that that's the way people should approach it. I haven't moved him until but if you know, if he's in a boot again tomorrow, we'll evaluate tomorrow. That was today's news and notes brought to you, as always, by Sleeper, where the Megalobowl is also hosted. Where it swims. Um, where, where the Megalobowl swims. Yes. Okay, I can, get, I can get behind that. All right, we've got <laughs> – Jason can't. We've, we've got <laughs> top ten tight end rankings, some Sleeper tight end picks on the way. Before we get into it, we want to thank the sponsors that support this podcast – Look, you know how challenging hiring is. Before we did this podcast, uh, we worked for a gaming company, always looking to hire qualified candidates, would spend forever trying to do it uh, to find qualified applicants, still not always ending up with the right hiring uh, situation that we wanted. Look, there's one place that you can go where hiring is simple, fast, and smart. And that's the key thing right there, smart. A place where growing businesses connect to qualified candidates candidates and that place is ziprecruiter.com slash footballers they send your job to over a hundred of the web's leading job boards so there's the smart part they don't stop there and with their powerful matching technology they scan thousands of resumes to find people with the right experience and then they invite those people to apply for your job so they're pursuing that in a smart way for you they're so effective that four out of five employees who post on ziprecruiter get a quality candidate through the site in their first day. Right now, our listeners can try ZipRecruiter for free at this exclusive web address, ZipRecruiter.com slash footballers. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash footballers. ZipRecruiter.com slash footballers. ZipRecruiter, the smart way to hire. And we also want to thank CBS Sports HQ, helping sponsor today's episode. Sports TV nowadays, man, it's just full of bickering and made up drama the the fake yelling at each other all of that stuff but cbs sports hq they're here to change that cbs sports hq is a network that streams 24 7 to bring you top tier sports coverage without any of the yelling or fake debates they'll even bring you all the latest news the highlights the previews the recaps from around the sports world every day best of all It's free. It's not free for a week or free for a month. If you have some sort of cable special package, it's totally (laughs) free. You don't even need a login. You just open the CBS Sports app and watch anytime from anywhere on your phone or at at your home or at work. Don't get fired. Apple TV, (laughs) Roku, Fire TV. It couldn't be easier. Download the CBS Sports app and watch CBS Sports HQ today. Tight ends. You know, we do this show every day of the week. And it still feels like there's too much going on right now. Mm. There's just all the camp reports and injuries and preseason games. Like, it's exciting, but there's just so much happening. Let's double our shows. Now, Let's, Jason, two now, hours now of show. Now stop. I just want to let Jason the fuck can, man know I was in. Jason can do an exclusive secondary show. Oh, that medical be... advice only. <laughs> yes, it's and called kickers. below. It's the Below the Shin podcast. Below the Shin. Focus I'm feeling on wristy. <laughs> High ankle ish. 
All right, top 10 tight end rankings plus some sleeper tight end picks on the show today. Um, interesting. We've got the same chart that we had yesterday. Yesterday we were looking at where quarterbacks finished in reality relative to their average draft position going into 2018. There was one quarterback that outperformed their average draft position. His name was Andrew Luck. There was one that was the same, Kirk Cousins. Average draft position was nine, finished nine. The rest, you were probably disappointed in your selection. You're probably happy with Deshaun Watson because you drafted him at two. He finished five. When you look at the tight end position, last year Gronk was the number one tight end off the board. Now these, and then these are points per game finish we're talking. That's correct. Um, Gronk was the tight end one off the board, finished at eight. Kelsey and Ertz, you Come were on. happy. He was the, the the tight end two, finished number one. Zach Ertz was the tight end three, finished number two. We'll talk about them today. Otherwise, well, and ew, yeah, you big ew. You have you know Jimmy Graham at four, finishing twenty first. Greg Olson at five, finishing fifteenth. And and again, these are points per game, so it's it's not just oh they got injured. It's just right. no, they they stunk. And so here's the reality: if you remember last season, there was the big three and then garbage. Right, it was, it was, it was. Do you want Gronk, Kelsey, and Ertz? And then it was a tear break off of a cliff. You know, the same one that the you're running down the river and there's a waterfall at the end. It's that cliff. That's what it was last year, and you saw that. That came true this year. I would say, do do you guys agree that there's kind of a secondary? There's a big three, but then yeah. there's this little middle tier sliver of a couple of guys that I think are more interesting than they were last year. And then the cliff. Then the cliff of... I game. hope you're right about that. I hope we're right about that. I hope there is that secondary tier and it's not a mirage. That's what I hope. Well, the the nice thing about the that middle tier this year, it's not the... It's, you're not trying to get the value from the older guys, which you still can, but it's tough to give up a middle-round pick. You know, Jimmy Graham, Greg Olson. These are older guys for the NFL. They aren't the up and coming tight ends. And this year, those guys going in the middle, those are the up and coming tight ends of, of OJ Howard, Evan Engram and Hunter Henry, all young guys who still have room to grow. I think that I am taking the tight end approach of if I don't get the five, any of the five at the right draft. So who's your six that is left out? Um, I'm guessing well, How Hunter Howard Henry. and yeah, Hunter Henry is the one that's okay. left out. Ingram and Howard are in that category, and then the top three. But you know, Scott Barrett tweeted about this. I heard it on a podcast a couple weeks ago. The tight end scoring, specifically the middle tight end six through twelve, it is disintegrated over the last couple of years. It's the lowest that the tight end six through twelve has scored in the last ten years. It's not a place where you're finding value. Well, the, the NFL is changing. Like The tight end used to be the safety blanket. If no one was open, I knew that the tight end was there and I could check it down to him. Now they check it down to the running back. So if you look at running back receptions. Shout out to Dennis Pitta, famous <laughs> yeah. check down master. As the running back receptions go up, you can see the tight end receptions going down. So... There's only one Jason, ball. Jason, you, you have that same five kind of view? I have the exact same five. Um, while I do like Hunter Henry and even Vance McDonald a little bit, I you know, they're, they're two guys that I'm not sure how much more I like them than some of the just I can take with my last round pick guys because we'll talk about that at the end of the show. Some of those super late guys that I'd be okay leaving the draft with and I would I think if I don't get one of those top five, I'm leaving with one of the guys we talk about at the end of the show. All right, Travis Kelsey is the number one tight end in football the last three years. He's one, two, one. He's a guaranteed he's guaranteed production at the position. He has the MVP uh, throwing him the football. He's got one of the best offenses in football. He had 150 targets last year, 1,300 plus yards and 10 touchdowns. He broke the NFL record for yardage at the tight end position for about an hour. And then George Kittle's like, I'll take that. But you're pretty good anyways. So last year he only had one game that qualified as a bust, and that was uh, week one when people were like, "Oh no, oh Patrick Mahomes, I, he's no Alex Smith." Just it was not that he's not an Alex or that he's not better than Alex Smith, but we didn't know, we had no clue what Patrick Mahomes' tendencies would be and with that, the tight end. Yeah, I mean, I raised my hand as guilty like that. That rattled my nerves. Yeah, it did, and then he rattled off uh, the rest of the entire season. 
which was unbelievable. So we don't need to say much about Kelsey. He other than you, you have to he's talk about very his price. firmly the number one tight end. But are you willing to pay that second round pick to take a tight end who's a onesie position? Yes, you should theoretically be dominant at that. But also last year, theoretically, you should have been dominant taking Rob Gronkowski in the second round as well. It just feels different than that, though. He's played 16, 15, 16 games the last three years. Actually, the two years before he played 16 as well. I haven't taken him. Okay. I don't know why. <laughs> I probably should. Jason, do you have you taken him in many of your mocks in the second round? Uh, if yeah, I mean, I I think he's a worthy pick there. The reality is, onesie positions we usually try to avoid, go late, stack running backs and wide receivers. But there's just such a huge gap between the depth that you have at quarterback, where it's like I, you know, there's 22 quarterbacks I actually like. There are three tight ends that I actually like, and then there's two that I'm like maybe, and that's it. I don't want to, you know, if, if I can get value on one of the top three, I'm going to take them. Yeah, I, I think it makes sense, especially if those middling finishes. that You know, tight end six through 12, that's the guys that finished in that spot, and they still have the lowest scoring than they've had over the last 10 years. Yeah, I mean, So there's a big point gap. We bring up the fact that, uh, you know, Trey Burton finished as the tight end seven last year, which is like, oh, yay, but that was terrible. I mean, T Trey Burton was trash. Yeah, because he was 13 in actual points per game. He just happened to be there. Right. Zach Ertz is our consensus, too. I'm very tempted to flip-flop him and George Kittle. Right now, yeah. Ertz is two, Kittle's three. I'm probably going to change that very soon. But this is the way the the stats broke out right now. But last year was such an outlier season for Zach Ertz, which you say, wait, he's a really good player. Of course he is. He's an amazing player. He still, we were just talking about Alshon Jeffrey, 900 yards. Jeffrey was hurt. Deshaun Jackson wasn't there. Um, there are reasons to believe Mike, that the 156 targets for Zach Ertz are not going to approach that total. Mike Wallace, who was brought in to be the deep threat for the team last year, missed essentially the entire season. And the I mean, Zach Ertz is great, but will he return value on the pick? Will he be that much of a difference maker like we believe Travis Kelsey will be. You look at Zach Ertz's game log. Once, I mean, at the beginning of the season, it was double-digit targets in all but two games through week nine. I mean, he, was, he was just an absolute vacuum for targets. After that, they make a trade. They bring Golden Tate in. And Golden Tate is there for, for seven games. And in that time, Zach Ertz went double-digit targets only twice. He was on a pace of eight targets a game, which is still outstanding for a tight end, but he only scored three times in, in that time period as well. Is that production enough to make you spend? Where Where is he going? Is he a fourth-round pick right now, or is he a third round? I don't have uh, – let me see. The ADP right now is – Yeah, 309. Yeah, I've just – I'm not yeah. spending I'm not it. paying it. And I will. And I will okay. pay that because, you know, you talk about that. So that, will you pay it for poor, 74 receptions for 824 yards that, and eight touchdowns? If he gets 128 targets, which would be the what you said, if he was getting eight targets a game, the, the fewer targets, and that's about where I've got him. I, I think he will return value in the sense that I don't have to play the game. You know, it's like – It will how, return how many, value to you as a fantasy owner. Right. To remove that variable exactly. from your life. Because the, the issue is... I sometimes think, that hurts. I, oh! Boom! Boom! boom. Uh, I think that <laughs> I am... Dad gun! <laughs> ...good enough at finding uh, wide receivers and running backs in the middle rounds that are going to outperform their you know their situation. I'm better at that than I am finding it's a like tight end in round eight or nine or seven that's going to outperform it. So, yes, you do lose something taking that tight end. You do. And I don't think Zach Ertz has as good a season as he had last year. In fact, he's my number three. I've, I, I do have Kittle higher than Zach Ertz this year in half-point PPR leagues. Um, there should be a target regression coming for him. But target regression regression down to the 120s is still going to be a very known commodity at a position that is so difficult to succeed with on a week-to-week -week basis. I think that's a pretty compelling angle 
for Zach Ertz there. Because the price, it's three oh nine. It's not in it's really not reflective of people expecting one hundred and sixteen receptions and eleven sixty three and eight, is it? I would imagine if you were expecting that, it's, he'd go higher. He'd be in the Kelsey draft range. It's compelling to say, hey, sure, I can play roulette. I can go for a late-round guy, but I don't want to. Isn't that part of fantasy? Uh, yeah, what you it want, absolutely what is. What you want to deal with on a weekly basis? But also part of that is your opportunity cost of paying that price for George K- or for, for Ertz or Kittle because they're going back-to-back, and those guys that you could miss – in that, uh, in the time that it's actually your pick, once the turn has come around, David Montgomery, Josh Jacobs, Stephon Diggs, Chris Carson, Julian Edelman. I mean, ah, now I know why I didn't draft Zach Ertz in any of my mock drafts. Exactly. It's it's it all comes down to the opportunity cost. But if you if you want to play like Jason and be a little baby about your tight end, <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> <laughs> then that's what you're gonna do. You're gonna take one of the top three. Yeah, he wants the um, he wants the easy route with the tight end position. He must set it and forget it. Yeah, you know, it, <laughs> it, I want I want to just have, get Goddard too and flex Goddard out. I want to have my you know fantasy roster at every position be uh, an advantage over the opponent. When it comes to quarterbacks, I'm I'm confident that I can have an advantage over my opponent streaming, meaning playing a guy off of waivers based on the matchup. Over the last couple seasons, it has not been as easy to stream the tight end position to actually True. look at the matchup and go, this team's bad against tight end. I'm going to roll with this guy. And it, sometimes it works, but a lot of times it doesn't. I, I, I just believe in our ability at running back and wide receiver to patch that hole easier than patching the hole of tight end. Yeah, and you're right, Mike. Once Tate was there filling that role, the, the target share went significantly down for Zach Ertz over that period of time. Dallas Goddard's banged up right now, should be back for the regular season. It'll be interesting to see how your thoughts on Goddard, Jason, congeal with your your hope for Ertz because you will be – here's a – remember I told you I can see the future? Oh, yes. Sometimes, when whenever it goes my way, those are the times. Mm-hmm. Uh, there will be plenty of plays where Zach Ertz owners jump out of their couch, put their fist in the air and go, yeah! And, oh, oh, no, that's Goddard. Now what catching were they that, catching that touch? Now what were they doing inside of their couch? That's the real question. If they're going to jump out of the uh, the couch, mm-hmm. you don't sit inside your couch. I <laughs> sit an on idiot. my couch. <laughs> Mike and I both sit in our couches. <laughs> Have I been doing it wrong, dummy? All right, George Kittle. <laughs> you called him a little baby, <laughs> and then we ganged up on him like we sit in our couches when he pointed out I'm my, the dummy. my stupid <laughs> comment. <laughs> Oh man, you're you're. Um, we did praise your medical advice though today. Oh, it's uh, super keep good. Keep that in mind. Number three, George Kittle. Last year, 136 targets, 1377 yards, and five touchdowns. George Kittle was exhilarating to own on my fantasy team. Part because I got him off of waiver wire. Uh, this year, you got to pay. The three you pay 10. the iron they're, price. They are back to back. If you want Kittle, if you want Ertz, they're both at the very back of the third, and and they're back to back in picks. So you just you're taking either the leftover, which right now would be Kittle on uh, in average, or you're choosing to take Kittle over Ertz. I don't think you can stop what George Kittle does best in the NFL. I don't believe you can. I don't believe that teams are going to approach. It, it's not like they weren't trying to stop him last year, but I don't think you get to go into this year and say this year. No big place to George Kittle. You don't have the available people to cover a player that can do what he did. 20 receptions of 20-plus yards. That is the most in, among tight ends. It was tied with Robert Woods for eighth most among all pass catchers. He He's is a, too valuable of a weapon on a team that needs weapons. He is a physical dominant freak. We we're talking a 90th percentile spark athlete. 250 pounds runs a two a four a two a four runs five a two, two. two baby a two um, two twenty he's a Tesla <laughs> so, <laughs> and, and, yeah I mean look there were a lot of things Model G that happened uh, there were a lot of things that happened last year to allow okay, him I, to break sorry in. sorry we must break in here I don't mind it <laughs> you I, like the Model G I don't mind it at all <laughs> I tried I tried all right uh, yeah I'll allow it running uh, a two two so. 
uh, you know, the, he, obviously a lot of things happened to allow him to break the NFL record that aren't necessarily going to happen. There will be I, – I still believe in Dante Pettis as uh, having the ability to step up and you bring in two other rookies. But he has the ability. It's what Andy's saying. Like, you don't just break it because other guys went down. You don't break the all-time NFL record. He's great. And what has convinced me recently is, you know, I've been – because of Dante Pettis and all the news coming out – uh, Andy and I both really high on Pettis, and then stuff starts looking bad. Is it motivational? Is it real? But among all of the research I've been doing on Pettis, the one thing that keeps sticking out to me from all the beat reporters, including not opinion but actually tracked targets through training camp, is that George Kittle is the clear number one target for this team. Right. Whatever you believe in Pettis or Debo or Jalen Hurd, it, it is Kittle – who is the centerpiece of the offense, that's what I've become convinced of. So barring injury, I do think he's going to be great, and I'm willing, just like with Zacherts, obviously I've got him ahead of Zacherts, I'm willing to take him there. Do you have any concern at all, just throwing it out there, we haven't seen Kittle do it with Jimmy G? Mm, no. no. That, that's where I was – that was part of my issue, was we, we haven't seen that. But when I, I think Garoppolo is a good quarterback. I believe Garoppolo is a good quarterback, but maybe he doesn't target the tight end – as as much as heavily rely on he that better type of an he outlet. he but, better. But that's where the targets through training camp. He's so far ahead of everyone else in the target volume through training camp that it just shows. Oh, he is the, the number one guy. Yeah. <sighs> Evan <number> Ingram. <laughs> Evan Ingram. Evan Ingram. Yes. Number four tight end consensus rankings. I have drafted Evan Ingram more than any player in any mock draft that I have done. He's going at the five eleven. I think I've probably drafted him in the sixth round in the majority of the mocks where I have taken him. Evan Ingram is this year's George Kittle. I don't mind it. There aren't great passing options. Odell Beckham Jr. is gone. You obviously have Saquon out of the backfield. Sterling Shepard is banged up. Cody Latimer is a has, was, maybe <laughs> never. Has never been. And, uh, you know, especially the first four weeks of the season, Ingram has the camp buzz you need. He was a player that last season ended on a high note, had a 16-game pace of 65 receptions for 839 yards on 93 targets. And, again, another one of those athletic hybrid yes. freaks that can make big plays happen. One big play from George Kittle, one big play from Evan Ingram changes your entire week as a fantasy owner so I love the value of Evan Ingram if you're in a PPR league I like him a lot more I don't expect him to be a touchdown monster you know we're now into the tier where we're talking about Evan Ingram OJ Howard and then possibly Hunter Henry and and when you talk about the breakout the okay someone's gonna break into that top three either become the clear fourth or beat one of those top three I think you're going to need touchdowns but in those middle to late rounds if he drops into the sixth round in a full PPR league, I think he's he's just too important to the offense. You know, there's a lot of quality tight ends. Like, the difference to me between Evan Ingram and Hunter Henry is that Evan Ingram could very well lead that team in targets, whereas Hunter right. Henry has no chance whatsoever. So, I, if you're in a PPR, I'm a big fan of uh if you Evan if, if you said buy, sell, Evan Ingram leads the team in receptions – I would probably sell it. I would sell. If you said leads the team in yards, I might buy it. Yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, and he's Evan Ingram has been awesome when Odo Beckham has been off the field. He has shown the ability to step up. When Beckham is off the field, he's up to nearly eight targets a game, almost sixty receiving yards a game, and he has the big play uh, ability that not many tight ends have. He was a first round pick. This is only his third season. <clears throat> I think that uh, I think Evan Engram's upside is I agree with you. He, his upside is he's this year George this year's George Kittle, although he's not free or late in drafts. Needs to stay healthy. Yeah. Needs to get rid of the drop problem that he's had on and off throughout his career. How much does seeing Daniel Jones even in a small sample size it in the preseason, him. Mike, affect your <laughs> uh affect your view of if Daniel Jones has to come in, I mean, does it? That's been a concern, right? Like we've seen, we've seen Eli Manning willing to right. go to Evan Ingram. Does the offense turn to a halt if he's switched out for Daniel Jones? Uh, Jason it's, said, 
yes, it hurts him, I think, in the it, middle of it, that question. It is a red flag for Evan Ingram, but at the same time, he's just he is a great player according to the NFL Next Gen stats. No player ha- averaged a greater separation on their routes run than Evan Ingram, as, as in he would get the most open. So as long as Daniel Jones is looking for him, Ingram is going to be open. O.G. Howard at number five. Yes. Yeah. This is the guy. He's my number four. I, I am. I, you he's say, so good. He's number four. He, he, you say that Evan Ingram is this year's George Kittle. I, that's how I see O.J. Howard, a, a true breakout into like the ability to be a, a second-round pick next year because – Out of a couch type of explosion. Of, I'm going to explode out of that couch, say, why was I in here? And who is that giant beast of a man? O.J. Howard is the one human that, you know, might – he goes up to George Kittle, and George Kittle's looking up and going like, I'm a little scared of you. O.J. Howard is 6'6", 251, ran a four five one, and he has a quarterback that targets tight ends like yes. crazy. Cameron Brait was a really good fantasy tight end, even though Cameron Brait is just an average talent. You lose Adam Humphreys and Deshaun Jackson from the offense. And in the meantime, coming into year three, the only thing you've ever seen from Evan Ingram is complete dominance on the field. You mean O.J. Howard? O.J. Howard. Is, is that the, a little Freudian slip because you love Ingram? It was. The only two tight ends with a higher percentage, actually the only one if, if we're saying more than one game played, last year, Travis Kelsey had a higher rate of top 12 finishes, and then it was O.J. Howard. That's it. I mean, he's he's never been on the field and not been good. Cameron Brait is still an American football tight end for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Had six touchdowns for them last year. I think they were on like the first four games. Um, any concerns with the time no. losing the no, occasional just, touchdown to Cameron Brait? Not at this. Well, like the occasional touchdown, yes, but that happens. That'll happen to everyone. Sure. But the the, the concern back when Howard was first coming into the league of Cameron Brait, he was the Brait was the established tight end. He will run as the the number one tight end. I that change has happened. It's now Howard. Update on Kenyon Drake. In a walking boot, head coach uh, Brian Flores says the injury will quote be a while. Uh oh. But said the team hopeful, ready for opener. Oh, you're doubling up in your Bellagio if you've <laughs> taken him late. Wow. Do you mean double down? Uh, no, I meant doubling up. You're oh. you've just doubled your money. Uh, it could knock Kenyon Drake's ADP down, down, down. Yes. So if you believe that he can earn that spot at some point in the season, could make him a steal. Now this is going to be one of those heart versus mind because I have always been a believer, and if he drops, I want to take him. But this year, I'm trying to not buy the injury dip and learn from last, you know, last year's mistakes. What do I but, do? That's the top one. It's it is. I'm traveling back. But a, a point that I really wanted to emphasize about Evan Ingram, with Golden Tate missing those first four games, I th- Ingram I think will be good season long. But in particular, those first four games, he could be he could be a, a top two tight end over those four games. Um, some injury notes on O.J. Howard. He's been banged up. And uh, you need to pay attention to that aspect of drafting O.J. Howard, um, season cut short last year, ankle foot injuries, Matt Betts from the Ultimate Draft Kit, number one predictor of future foot and ankle injuries is the prior issues that he has. It's the ankle-ish um, area. In that ankle ankly spot. <laughs> Hunter Henry at six, Vance McDonald at seven in our top ten tight end rankings. Henry, you know, not a lot of – talk buzz around Henry probably at no fault of his own other than enough I mean he's going in the sixth round that's that's true for a player who didn't play last year where we uh, in fantasy football we tend to have very short memories that's pretty solid buzz there has been you know when Travis Kelsey's career began we were only saying what if what if Travis Kelsey could play a full season and be healthy what would happen there's a little bit of that with Hunter Henry because when you look at the depth chart, pass catchers, what's going on, you're kind of like, okay, either Mike Williams is having the biggest year of his life or Hunter Henry is going to contribute to this offense in a big way. 
Yes, and I I believe in Hunter Henry. I don't like I don't like the draft cost of having to be all in on him because I consider having to pay a six round pick for him is going all in. But he of of the players we're talking about, he does have a chance to finish in that top five, that that top four as well because he's one. He is a great player. We've already talked about a a quarterback who throws to the tight end position. Philip Rivers had a historical career throwing to Antonio Gates, who was also gone. Antonio Gates was a bit of the problem for for Hunter Henry early on in his career. But Henry is one of those, also one of those athletic monsters, and and he has the ability to be a great tie, a, a great fantasy tight end. Yeah, Hunt. See, that, that's that's one of my issues. Is is actually the the athletic. He came out as one of the top two guys, and so you you kind of you view him as a, a hyper athlete. But at the tight end position, he's actually not. Uh, he was you know a, a, a slow runner, uh, a spark score that's not very high, and that's actually kind of two fifty four seven is at six six five two fifty four seven is athletic enough for me. Well, he's fifteenth percentile in spark. So I, you know, the thing is, is he's not going to be the number one target, right? Like Zach Ertz is not, Zach Ertz is not the most hyper athlete. Like he's not the Kittle, the OJ right. Howard, you know, those guys. So that's what you need, right? He's a, he's a talented route runner. He's great at catching the ball. Hunter Henry is not a bad player at all, but he's not going to be the one there, right? And he's probably not going to be the second target there. He might be the two. He, he could, but I think Mike Williams, I think most people would say Mike Williams is going to have more targets than Hunter Henry. He's one of these middle round yeah. guys that I'm probably just avoiding. He could break out. I I'm avoiding him because I'm spending this middle round pick for a guy that I don't think is going to be a weekly starter. And I, at that I would, point, I'm streaming. I would feel better about Hunter Henry if I thought that this Chargers defense wasn't really good. To be honest, if I thought Phil Rivers was doing that comeback routine on a regular basis. And the, the script we've seen with Antonio Gates catching 15-yard passes over and over and over again in the middle of the field. Um, safety blanket for Phillip Rivers, that tight end position. It's definitely interesting, but you're paying a lot for Hunter Henry. Do we Are we in agreement that Hunter Henry does get a nice boost if Melvin Gordon is not there? Um, yeah. I, I, from I, a target perspective. I don't know. Okay. I don't know. 95th percentile spark score Vance McDonald at number seven I don't know what to do with him I take him because he's going eighth round sometimes right now he's the tight end eight off the board seven uh ten average drop position a lot of opportunity vacated targets really hasn't been able to stay healthy drops the football obviously jettisoned from San Francisco into Pittsburgh great opportunity but I'm willing I'm willing to take him See what happens, but I'm willing to pivot off of him quickly if it doesn't look like he's going to be heavily involved. Yeah, I I agree. He he is the the last guy that is somewhat tempting to me in the middle rounds. He uh, you know he's going behind guys like Hunter Henry in the draft, but I've got him finishing ahead because the vacated targets, the fact that um, the fact that you've got Jesse James gone, obviously all the Antonio Brown targets vacated, and we've seen Vance McDonald completely dominate yes he's just a huge injury risk he's never been able to really stay healthy I mean he dominated back for San Francisco we loved him at times and then every time we were like oh yeah look at this crazy athlete Vance McDonald who's gonna dominate injured oh he's back he's gonna dominate injured and then it's like oh he traded traded to the Steelers kind of late in the year or, or late in the uh in the camp and then didn't get involved now is his opportunity now is like a true breakout potential. I think it could happen. I'm willing to take a shot at that because you have a freak with the target vacated situation where he should be able to soak up a lot of work. Didn't go over 50 yards from week six on. Didn't catch more than four passes from week six on. Yeah, Vance McDonald is you, – you can't look at last year's production because this is – why we like Vance is this is a completely different team. Antonio Brown, the number one target of that team, is gone. And like Jason said, Jesse James. So the, the other player at at the position who can take Vance McDonald off the field is gone. And, and there's the, 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 the talk out of camp 
They have no idea who the wide receiver two is. The drum beat is definitely for Dante Moncrief, but it could still end up being James Washington. They don't know. But Vance, Mc we do know that Vance McDonald, when he catches the ball, because he drops it sometimes, but when does, he catches does, the ball, does some dirty deeds. He he steals souls, and he is an incredible guy out in space. So that's that's why he is here because the opportunity is so is is so insane. But the draft price has risen with that. When when I really really liked Vance McDonald, I mean he was a he was a double digit guy. I'm going to write him a letter. Ago. I'm going to tell him to steal three fewer souls this year <laughs> if that can keep him healthy I mean, and on the field. It's he's, because sometimes he is you, Sung. you run violently. Yes, he does. Jared Cook at eight, Eric Ebron at nine, David Njoku at 10, rounding out the rankings. We've talked a lot about middle round performances, taking your shot. I'll take my shot on Jared Cook, sure. Yeah, Jared Cook going behind Vance McDonald. That. That makes it hard to go in, go all in on Vance McDonald because it's the same situation for the Saints. I guess a little bit different because you have Michael Thomas and Alvin Kamara, but beyond those two guys, Jared Cook could step in and be the third highest targeted player on the team. The target volume for New Orleans, yes, it keeps coming down and down and down, but Drew Brees is still an excellent quarterback. Is this a move up to 11, Jason? I know uh, on the show the other day you were making some notes and one of them had Cook with an up arrow. I believe it is an up. I, I've I've changed him uh, up to eleven. But the the truth for me, and I hate to say this, but like this whole now that we're into these this tier of players, you you mentioned Injoku. Injoku's my seven, my tight end seven, um, and Jared Cook is my tight end eleven. There is so little difference in my stats between these players. The actual fantasy point difference between the next, you know, five guys from Injoku down is just completely irrelevant. It's take a five-sided die and throw it. There's no difference to me between any of them, and I'm not picking any of them in I my wanna, draft. I want to see that die. I'm not. I want to see that that five-sider. <laughs> sure, sure I want to see that five-sided sure die. I'm picturing five it in my die. brain right now. Uh, I Let's will find Google. out. I will Google. But you know, I'm I'm not picking any of them. <laughs> oh, it's weird looking. <laughs> It's real weird. <laughs> I'm not picking Njoku. I'm not picking Cook. Uh, you know, once once I'm past, uh, once I'm personally past uh, Vance McDonald, I'm going You're late out. round. If I had to t take a shot, like right now, the rankings say that I'm lower on Cook, but at least with Cook, we've seen him number five last year. Right, we've seen him do it. He is an athlete. He's on a good offense, so there are reasons that I think you could, you know, see him come through this year um but I just I'm not I mean th that's the thing the the reality is you're listening to this podcast to know who should I draft who should I avoid personally I'm not drafting any of this tier of guys I'm waiting until the end of my draft to if I don't get one of those good tight ends I'm just getting a late guy and I'm going to stream the position see all of our rankings projections for each and every tight end in the ultimate draft kit at ultimatedraftkit.com give me a sleeper tight end that did not make the top 10 consensus that you'll take a look at, take your shot at, be willing to pivot, stream if they don't work out. I'm contractually obligated at this point. But of course it's Jordan Reed. <laughs> the rule 86, baby. Look, he will not die. <laughs> he, he will not be. I mean, he gets really hurt, but he won't die. He will remove the flesh wound. He will remove bones from his toes if that's what it takes to play football all reports out of Washington if they're talking about pass catchers it's about Jordan Reed it's about Jordan Reed is healthy Jordan Reed looks great he has Jordan Reed hasn't come into a training camp healthy and I think three or four seasons can I have fun with you for a minute of course injuries since 2013 you have to let <laughs> no. me you have to let me do this the podcast can only go on so long Andy all right fair enough <laughs> But go ahead. Quadricep strain, hip contusion, concussion, thumb sprain, hamstring sprain, hamstring strain, quadricep strain, concussion, shoulder contusion, ankle sprain, thumb contusion, concussion, shoulder strain, rib contusion, hamstring tear, toe sprain. Look, I didn't his, hear it. He likes football and his body doesn't like it. I didn't hear any rib problems, though. <laughs> so I think I think he's okay. Rib contusion week two, 2017. Oh, I missed it. I missed it. I'm out. <laughs> 
I'm, I'm out all on re- All six. reports of all time is that Jordan Reed is awesome when he's healthy. Yes. But that list is laughable. I'll throw the Walrus out there. Darren Waller. <laughs> I like that we're, we're making fun of my Jordan Reed pick because he gets hurt. Darren Waller actually is hurt. Uh, he is as active as he's been since suffering his shoulder <laughs> sprain, and that's all you need to know. Here's the here's the thing. He's he's a, a spark freak. He's an athletic freak, and he's stepping into a role that saw 68 receptions, 896 yards, and six touchdowns, which was Jared Cook last year. And he's free if you want to take the shot on him. Free. Yeah. Uh, my late round guy that I I really like is Mark Andrews. Uh, wide receiver for the Baltimore Ravens. He wide you know, receiver. Was that, was huh? that a? Di- I wasn't sure if that was on purpose. Well, it's it wasn't on purpose, but it is also true. He is basically a wide receiver for them. He was only on the field for around on average about thirty five percent of snaps last year as a rookie, which is very common for rookie tight ends. This is why we, you don't draft rookie tight ends. Like we tell everybody, you know who's not on our list right now? Noah Fant and T J Hawkinson. Who Noah? Who? Noah, fantastic. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, we help. They're not, they're not on this list because it's so incredibly rare for a rookie tight end to get a snap percentage that is meaningful enough to be good for fantasy. It's really like Evan Ingram has done it, Gronk years before. That's it. End of list. Um, how dare you forget the name of Jeremy Shockey? Well, I didn't know how far back I had to go here, Mike. Mike Ditka <laughs> was so good at tight end. Um, no, but Mark he actually was. But, yeah, but. Well, sure. That's what, statute of limitations here. Um, Mark Andrews last year as a rookie with only 35% snap percentage was actually really good. It, the, it, once Lamar Jackson came, he was on a 700 yard pace, which would have been second only to Jeremy Shockey in a rookie yardage season. Now he comes into year two the, they've built the system around that. Early indications are are that that he has been the number one target for Lamar Jackson. I think his target or his snap percentage can go way up. And Mark Andrews is is a beast. I I really like him. I think he could be yeah, one of those. I guys. think we all like Mark Andrews. All right, that is it for today's episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Thank you for subscribing, listening. Before we close out, because I had to find out, is there a five sided dice? Yes. Five sided die, and one of the first thing that shows up. Is a is a Reddit thread? Are five sided dice fair? Are they so, fair? So there's a problem with your yeah. five sided die, Jay. Um, They're not fair. We want to thank today's studio sponsor, Pristine Auction. Uh, Evan Ingram signed jersey yesterday, forty nine dollars. Mm. Signed jersey. Is there one on the wall right it now? Is an Evan yeah, there's one on the wall right now. On the wall. Pristineauction.com to check that out. And again, jointhefoot.com to be a part of this year's Megalobowl tournament. With all the Foot Clan, who comes out on top? We'll find out soon. We'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.